college football, the Pac-12 announced on Friday afternoon that they, along with the Big Ten, are moving to a conference-only schedule. Now, I have got a ton of notes, a ton of things that I want to hit on this. Uh, Larry Scott, the commissioner of the Pac-12, that has kind of become the punching bag. We like to we like to dive on him a little bit. He has COVID-19. He lost his father earlier this year uh, to some other medical complications. So it, it's been a rough year for Larry Scott. That doesn't excuse some of the things that he has done in his profession. But this, this is where I feel bad. The guy's really bad at his job. And it doesn't mean he's a bad a guy. Job. It doesn't yeah. make it, I don't wish death upon his family or horrible things to happen to him. I just want him to not have this job anymore so the Pac-12 can become a better conference. Yes. Yes, agreed. That's um, all. So, so with that said, well wishes for Larry Scott and his yeah, family going through this. We hope you get better. Get better. Um Let's, so let's talk about this. The Pac-12 decides that they are going to move to a conference-only format. The Big Ten, which you and Sam talked about, the Big Ten moved to it on Thursday. They announced it Thursday after the Ivy League announced on Wednesday afternoon that they would be moving, or not moving, they are canceling their fall sports, and they will have a discussion on June 1st, or June 1st, January 1st of 2021. If it's feasible for them to have a season, going into January 1st, uh, then they're going to have a spring football season. And they're going to have all their other sports and whatnot, but basketball, all of that, the Ivy League, done. Wiped out for all of 2020. Now, now I mean, we got to s- separate this. The Ivy League makes zero dollars off of right, athletics. Right, right, right. Yes, they, that is all There's just... not a single athletic department in there that finishes in the black. This is true. Not near a one. Now, moving into that, the Big Ten jumped into a conference-only decision. They are scheduling only conference games. That affects 42 different teams. Uh, Ben jumps in on Twitch already. He said, cool WCE in the back there. Yeah, my wife got me that for Father's Day. Definitely cool. Definitely cool. Uh, But yes, the Big Ten moves to conference only. Of 42 different teams are affected by this. So the scheduling is just bananas right now, right? The MAC in and of itself lost a ton of money. We're going to dive into that here momentarily. And it became, it was a shock, really, to all of these other P5 commissioners when the Big Ten announced it on Thursday. It was a shock because they had all been having conversations about what this season was going to look like. They were trying to decide, do we want to only schedule each other? Do we only want to schedule within our own conferences? Et cetera, et cetera. And the Big Ten, in the middle of those conversations, really the day before, they were supposed to have a a massive call with all the other P5 commissioners, they went rogue, and they decided, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and announce it. Like, we'll get this out of the way, which is a little crazy. Well, then the Pac-12 decides it as well, which also makes sense because the Pac-12 schools, USC, Cal, uh, UCLA, et cetera, it looks like they're not going to be able to play until the middle of September. So, let's dive into... Uh, why I want I want to address that the, the fact that they went rogue for a minute. Go ahead. I think I got a couple of thoughts. First, I think Kevin Warren is yep. the best in college sports right now. In college, in the world of college athletics, I think he is leading his conference better than any commissioner, better than the NCAA, better than any athletic director. He is a man that is not afraid to make a decision, not afraid to make a hard decision. Okay? Well, I think it's it's easy to do that because he is the new guy on the block, and he comes in, and and he knows exactly what he wants to get but done. I, right? I think, okay, that's, that's fine. It, if you're the old guy on the block, and if you've been in the conference forever, and you're still afraid to make decisions, that's a damning um, accusation towards you, your character, and your ability to actually lead. This right? has, yeah, but this has nothing to do with an ability to make a decision. All of those other guys work to... He, the reason he went quote-unquote rogue is because he realized, I'm talking to four other nutsacks that don't know what they're doing, and everybody wants to go in a different direction, and everybody has a different philosophy, a different plan. You know what? Screw all you guys. We're going to do something, and I don't care. I don't care what you think. I don't care how it affects your conference. I don't care how it affects your money and your spending. We want football in the Big Ten, and the only way I know how to do it is if I control it all for one season. Yes. Okay? And so that means pissing all you guys off, 
I don't care. And I absolutely think that that's a sign of leadership because so many of these other commissioners are sitting there twiddling their thumbs wanting somebody else to make a decision for them. Yes, yes. Now, I understand that. I, I completely agree with you on that because somebody was going to have to make a decision and they were going to have to do it quickly, right? That's, that's where it comes from. The issue was that they made this decision the day before they were supposed to have a meeting regarding it. So but I'm not they, saying they, that it was anything they, bad. They, those meetings, they know what's happening. In those. It's not like that was the first meeting they were ever going to have. Either they I don't know why we're arguing about meetings. this. Like huh? it, this is, I don't know why we're arguing about this. Like yeah. I, I agree with you. No, but that's, uh, but that's what I'm saying though. Is is yes, he did it the day before they had a meeting, and I guess the the intention is is why not go into the meeting at least because he's been in these meetings. He know that nothing happens in these meetings. These yes. guys all get on a Zoom call and they all talk and everybody has their opinion and their thoughts. Then we leave there, and nothing's getting done. You know what? He's ready to get stuff done. Yeah, I don't know that that's a new guy thing. I I, I think that that's a leadership thing. There are it, some it leaders that when they walk out of meetings, shit happens, and other leaders walk out of meetings talking about the same thing they talked about the last month and a half, and nothing new has happened. Uh, Damian Estrada jumps in on YouTube. He said, "What's up?" And Michael Fritz jumps in. He said, "What's up from Monarch Dunes?" He's on the eleventh hole right now. That's uh, not a bad way to uh, to enjoy an afternoon. So let's move into the next step here. It, there are a lot of naysayers that say it will be impossible to have college football this season, but we do have MLS, MLB, NBA, NHL, NFL all moving forward. They And not all of them are playing yet, but we do have live sports on right now. We are moving in that direction. Conference only is the best way for us to get a season because each conference – effectively is their own league. There is no czar of college football. There is no commissioner for all of college football to determine what the standardized testing is going to be, what the uh, scheduling will look like, etc. So, let's go ahead and explain the scheduling format. Uh, when it's conference only, you can basically do whatever you want to. Correct. Like it, 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 the flexibility makes it so easy that you can schedule the games that are the most important early to make sure that you get them in, and then you can kind of rotate and see what you want to do as we go. So with the Big Ten, they're wanting to have a 10-game conference schedule. Who knows if that's actually going to be feasible or not, right? It, so it, it depends on all of the, the scheduling flexibility. It depends on whether or not kids get sick, whether or not they have to postpone games due to the fact that an entire offensive line room got knocked out, depending upon all kinds of other things. But if you have that happen, you can go week by week in this format and not have to worry about it, not have to worry about your television obligations, all of that kind of stuff, because it's all going to that. be there. I talked about that Friday. You yeah. basically have 15 weeks to get in 10 games if you yeah. want to make it to 10. You have 15 weeks to get in 10 games. You just start on time. And, and I thought about this over the weekend. I would give every conference one or every team, sorry, one we would like to postpone game you can if if your quarterback goes down if fields goes down for ohio state with with the rona and he's got to be quarantined for two weeks they got one week say we, we'd like to postpone one of these games we're gonna kick it down the road no problem you got 15 weeks to get in 10 games that's a you we're gonna do that for you every team gets one now they need they, they still got to make that game up that's okay this is why I don't think they should try to make the 10-game schedule up early. No, no, no. You, you schedule out four games to start with. Four, four and games try and get to start them. with, yeah. and, then, and then after that, every two weeks, you reschedule more. Two weeks, you reschedule more. 100%. If, if a star player goes down or a whole offensive line goes down or a whole team gets hit real bad and the conference says this is not safe, these teams are – this team is – Michigan's going to take off. Minnesota's going to take off for the next two weeks. Then, then you take their schedule out, you reschedule the next couple of weeks, you figure it out, you push everything back. And once again, 15 weeks to get in 10 games. That's literally taking a week off every game. Well, here, here's the thing. You're trying. It's not hard. You're really trying to get just get nine. That's what you're really well, yeah, trying you to get. You want to get nine. Yeah. But so, it, there's no reason you can't. There's no reason. you If your agreed. team gets killed and crushed with this thing over a week and you take two weeks off, like, just the way the science, what we know about this virus, you're not going to get crushed again. Everybody's already yeah. gotten it. We're good. Let's move forward. 
Uh, ben jumps in on Twitch. He said it'll be hard to judge teams from different conferences for the playoff spots because theoretically the Pac-12 could be at the same level as the SEC. Theoretically, we'll get there. Now we're we're gonna get to that on this uh, we're get there. on this thing. So uh, going back to what scheduling will look like, what we were just saying, uh, for those that want to know why conference only works, uh, your Texas A&M against South Carolina doesn't seem like it is the best option when you could have Texas A&M against North Texas or whoever one of their in-state opponents would be that's a non-conference game, right? But when it comes back to that standardized testing, again, their own leagues, et cetera, they, they can set in the SEC what they want the testing to be. The SEC can't go and tell uh, the Mountain West or the AAC or the MAC or whoever else. They can't tell them what they want their testing to be, and they those teams can't even afford it. Uh, they the can't afford the same of thing. Travel is irrelevant because all these people are flying charter if you're right. in the Power Five and most group of five. Uh, Damian jumps in. So going, so going from South Carolina to, to Texas A and M, or Rutgers to Nebraska is is nothing. It's nothing. Yeah, West Virginia to anywhere in the Big Ten is nothing. It it's just, you're right. It's controlling the testing and making sure everybody's doing the exact same thing and we're all following the same rules and umbrella. Damian jumps in on YouTube. He said, funny you mentioned MLS coming back because MLS has already postponed a game over the weekend because players got COVID. This is why I don't think sports should be coming back this soon. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss all of this. So we're going to get into the ethics of whether or not they should be playing as we, as we dive through. So the reason why these games are so important Right now that we're we're still discussing the scheduling aspect, they are going to schedule division games first for the conferences that have divisions. This is not going to be traditional whatsoever. You're going to have Alabama and Auburn in early October, likely. You are going to have Alabama LSU maybe in September. You're going to have you know Mississippi State and Ole Miss playing in late September, early October. Like these kind of things are going to happen because you want to get in the division games first to figure out who your conference championship game representatives are going to be. Why do they want the conference championship games to happen? Because those properties are incredibly valuable. Now, in the SEC, it's just part of the package. In the Big 12, in the AAC, in all of these other leagues, it is a whole separate property. So that game, regardless of how many games happen during the regular season, the TV package and that game are separate for the majority of these conferences, and that game matters a whole lot because the ratings are through the roof, and they will be again this year. Uh, Michael jumps in on Twitch said, I'm bummed no Colorado and A&M was looking forward to being in College Station. Yeah, uh, you'll, you'll get it likely soon because I would imagine that they are going to find a way to reschedule these games, not this season, but going forward, they will find a way to fit it in so that contracts can be met, etc. So, all of the division games scheduled first. And then you're going to fill in the rest of the gaps if you can have the remainder of the season. Uh, but this way, if you do the division games first, if you're only div- able to fit in six games in 12 weeks or whatever, then you've got your division champions. And you know yeah. what you're going to do. Your tiebreakers are done, all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, let's see. The Big 12 likely to schedule their biggest games earlier in the season. You're going to have Texas, Oklahoma early. You're going to have uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State early. You know, all of these will happen earlier because those are the games that matter. You got to get those in. So if you only have six games in a in a season, you want to make sure that you've got Oklahoma and Texas. You want to make sure that you've got Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. You got better. There's just no reason that once you get started, yeah. there's no reason to not be able to play out. You know, to get to nine or ten games. Right, right. It, and that's if we end it at the normal time that we normally end the season. There's nothing mathematically telling us we. We can't try to get 10 games in, you know, 20 weeks. Like, what happens if we play into December? Does the world end? No. No. Just keep playing. It's okay. We're not going to have a normal-looking bowl season anyway. So, you're not worried about getting into normal bowl season time and all that stuff. No one cares. But what what you worry about when you get in – now, obviously, everything's a little crazy anyway, but once you get into the next academic calendar year, then you have to worry about what the guys did academically in the fall and – then you have a whole nother set of circumstances in are they yeah, but academically you basically have the entire month of January, right? Uh, it depends on when they come back. It depends on when the school starts. Well, back. the national championship isn't played until the second week of January. Right. So how would two more weeks hurt that? And no, no, no. I, I agree with you on that. What I'm saying is if you continue playing and you keep pushing no, back but, and but whatnot. You don't, there's no re- you're, if we're trying to get 10 games in, I'm giving you another month. 
to get those 10 games in. So instead of 15 weeks, you got 19 weeks. To and be able to fit in those games. Then yeah. you can you still have the whole month of January to stay in the academic calendar or year, whatever, to, to get in your playoffs. All right. You, so, just don't, you just don't get three weeks off between game one and, and, and game two of the playoffs. So like, that's just it. You just got to play every week. Yeah, you just got to play every week because you've had a bunch of bye weeks anyway. So you've had a crap load of bye weeks yeah. if we took that long anyway. What's going to be weird and, and is what happens if one – one conference has no problems getting their 10 games in and other conferences are struggling based on how it's going and they take the full 15. What does that other conference do? Oh, well, that's, do that's the reason for you, five weeks. You have to be able to, to set some kind of a deadline. Like, and, and it doesn't matter how many games you get in. If you get in six, then okay, we're going to, we're going to judge you on the six. If you get in all is, 10. Is, yes. You're right. So I think 15 weeks is your standard schedule. That's your standard season, right? Yeah, right. So my question is, is one team, st- one conference starts and they don't have any major problems and they use their normal bye week and they can get 10 games in in 11 weeks, basically. And the other conferences need all 15 weeks. That means they're sitting and doing nothing for three weeks. I mean, that's what playoff teams are doing anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but that's... I know it's ridiculous, that's, but... That's different. Agreed. It, it is, it's insane. But it's not that and they're sitting and doing nothing. Both teams are doing the they're... same thing. Now you're asking one team to be three weeks off work more than the other team. Yeah. So, all right, with, with that said, let's talk about that uh, because we just brought up playoffs. It, the conference championship games are obviously important. Do we see an expansion of the playoffs? I think 100% yes. I, I, think, that we, I think that we could. Uh, probably not because... Obviously, the the powers that be don't typically don't know, do man. the things that we would think. But ESPN would 100% request it because I of the lack of inventory. Of break in case of emergency situations, and we say, look, we we have no possible – because Clemson's going to – if if all of the conferences do, Clemson's going to go undefeated. And we know that before the season starts. Well, I mean, They're we, going to go undefeated. They're going to murder everybody in the ACC. Well, it depends on whether or not – like because the ACC is talking about – bringing in Notre Dame, and that the Notre Dame thing would well, still happen. Well, they 100% going to bring in Notre Dame. Clemson's still going to go undefeated, okay? Clemson's going undefeated. It's going to happen. Okay. They're that much better than everybody else. So my question is, is if they weren't tested at all and they just smoke through everybody by 20, but we don't have any way to see are these other teams any good or not, and everybody finishes with four losses and they finish undefeated, what is what does that matter? How do we grade that as opposed to grading the Pac-12? And I'm, yes, they are better than anybody in the Pac-12 usually. They are better than anybody in the Big Tw- Big Ten usually. My or Big Twelve. My problem is is if you don't expand it, you're going to have some teams that have real beef that could legitimately be better than them. Oh, they're 100%. not going to have an opportunity to uh, to show it because they're going to have close games. Uh, ben said that happens anyway. Yes, it happens every year. The, the same yeah, thing we just talked about. Yeah, but at least we lie to ourselves, okay? We lie to ourselves and say, well, they we bring up one data point here and one data point there to split hairs. We're not going to have that opportunity. Oh, yeah. But I mean, we're going to say, like, well, they beat two SEC teams, even though one of them is a six-loss South Carolina team. Uh, but it's but, the same yeah. South Carolina team that beat Georgia in Athens. That's so right. at least you've so got that data bring point. It, we're going to bring up those types of right. data points now you're not going to have that luxury. Well, I mean, then it turns into, all right, well, the fifth or sixth best SEC team, Auburn last season, beat the Pac-12 champs in the yeah. first game of the year. That's Even right. though it was the first game of the year and it was in Dallas and blah, 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 like you have that data point, you're not going to have that this season. You're so, not going to have that. I, I do think that there's this is one of those, we need to make an exception to the rule. Our postseason's going to look weird anyway. If you think you're getting a normal bowl season, you're wrong. Oh, I it's just, see, there's, we there's will be no lucky. way that they're doing that. Well, let, let's just let's call it what it is. We will be lucky to get a college football season at this point. Well, yes, hundred um, percent. But we uh, the bowls without fans, the bowls likely not going to happen. The college football playoff, however, you can have pretty much anywhere, and that is worth so much more on yep. television. Which is which is why if you don't bowls. have the bowls, there's no reason to not have an eighteen playoff this year. Yeah, there's just no there's no argument for why you wouldn't. 
No, I, agreed, agreed. Uh, that, with that said, the contract still clearly stipulates that it is four teams and they will use whatever kind of analytics, et cetera, to get those four teams. But with less inventory coming in this season as far as games, ESPN could really push the CFP. And there's nothing, and I went through the entire website earlier to figure out if there is anything that could could stop them from doing this. And there's nothing. Like, there's no contractual obligation to only yeah. have four teams. They can expand it if they need to. Now, we'll see if that happens, obviously. But uh, but I think they should. They absolutely should this year. It would make a lot more sense because you're more likely to get the four best teams if you bring in eight. And that, that was my whole reason for wanting expansion anyway. Uh, Damien jumps in on YouTube, said, you don't see why college sports don't do like uh, the major leagues do and have a vote on having a season and have the students vote as well on whether to have a season or not in these conferences. The students have very vocally said that they want to play. Yep. Very vocally said. Now, we're, we're going to dive into that here momentarily. Uh, who does this impact the most? That is the biggest thing. And, no, the conference-only schedule does not impact, you know, Oregon, who was looking for a playoff spot by playing against North Dakota State and Ohio State, et cetera. That's not who this affects. Oklahoma getting that win over Tennessee early in the season. That's not going to help them with the playoff this year. Who it affects the most is the G5 and the FCS schools who depend on these buy games and these contracts yeah. every single season. Uh, to use a local example, Memphis. Their television budget that comes in, the television money that comes in from the AAC contract that was just approved last year, is a hair under $7 million a year. They had one game at Purdue this year that was canceled, and the contract was for $750,000. Now, it was a one-off. There is no home game coming back to them. There is no what a, It was a one-time thing they were going to play in West Lafayette, and they no longer get that $750,000. Now, we'll see what happens with all the contracts, et cetera. But when the Big Ten decided to cut out all non-conference games, the MAC lost over $25 million in budgeted buy games. Like, they don't get that money back from anywhere else. And the money that comes in for the MAC, television money, the AAC, we're talking about like they don't get a whole lot. You know, we always hear the SEC, every school gets 60-something million dollars, and the Big Ten is the same, and the Pac-12 gets, you know, 30-something million, and the Big 12 gets 40-something, whatever it is. The AAC getting $7 million is the closest to the Power Five of any of the group of five leagues. The numbers are that the MAC gets $900,000 per school for TV rights. Conference USA and the Sun Belt only get $500,000. You know, the Mountain West is somewhere in between uh, the MAC and the AAC. Those are the schools that are going to end up cutting a ton of sports this season. It, and not just this season. It's going to have ramifications wow. long term because right. they won't be able to make that money up. You know, it, this is just a conversation of whether or not we are going to have a season this year. And then it turns into, well, what are we going to do next year? When they cut the sport, they can't just bring it back the next season. There's a whole list of things that you have to go through to get to it. So that's who we have to pay attention to to see what's going to happen because. Hang on. Go ahead. You may be cut football, which is a crazy hard sport to just start from nothing. And then they literally just said, we messed this up. We're bringing it back. Yeah. They brought it and back. They brought it back three years later. No, they, they brought it. They voted to bring it back of like several months later and it took them three years to bring it back. Did it take three years to get back to playing? Yes. Game? It was three years before they played their first game. Back. It, you can go back and check me. I'm telling you, it was three seasons. So, and it, okay. may, it may be that some of these can fire back up immediately, but they're not going to be uh, nearly what they were, and it's going to take no, a but whole here's the thing, revamp. Gary, most of these aren't anything special anyway. That's why they're getting cut. Okay? That's why Agreed. Stanford it's non-revenue can... sports. It's all sports uh -huh. that cost money. However, it's less scholarships athletically that kids can use to be able to get into these schools. Okay. And that sucks. Not, that doesn't mean that the school is good at that sport. No, I, I mean, didn't say that. Literally, they can turn it back on, and those kids can start getting the scholarships again. Now, those kids can't. The next kids can, but but it's going to be the exact same as it was beforehand. They're getting cut because they're not competitive, and nobody cares about them. 
Stanford is never going to cut swim no matter how little money it makes because they are the best swimming school in the world. All right. It doesn't make a okay. lick of money for them, but they'll cut every sport they have outside of football before they cut swimming because it matters to them. Yes. yes. Every school has those small sports that matter to them, that they invest in heavily, even though it doesn't make them money. They're super competitive, competitive in them. Uh, ben, and, ben jumps in that, on Twitch, by the way. Those aren't going anywhere. Ben said, Boise State just brought their baseball team back from the 80s, and it was just cut after one season. Yeah. I get you're going to well, see yeah, that, that more often. That was a decision that they just chose to not. They didn't need baseball for a long yeah, time. It they didn't, it didn't, they didn't take need that it. long to bring baseball back. Right. They didn't need it. Then they decided, all right, we're making enough money. We can bring this sport back and try and right. try and field a competitive team, et cetera. And then this happens, and that's the first one on the chopping block. Oh right? yeah, yeah, because they just brought it back, so it's the easiest one to cut, and it's a pretty pricey sport. Yes. No, it absolutely is. Uh, so let, let's close out with this. Uh, one, the spring, that's not going to work. That's not going to happen. At, they will push back as far as they can, but they're not going to play in the spring. If you want to talk about the health and safety of kids, having them play two football seasons, wh- whether it's shortened or not, having them play two seasons in the same calendar year is impossible. That's not going to happen. So, And on top of that, if you push back and say that we're going to revisit this in Ju- or in January, who knows what's going to happen when you actually get into flu and cold season? Because that's when the viruses are more, and it's not necessarily this one, but who knows what's going to happen at that point? So if you get into December and you've got another spike, what do we do at that point? So at that point, you may just have no season whatsoever. So they're going to try and do everything they can to get this thing into the fall, period. Uh, ethics, right? So Jay Mariotti came on uh, Paul Feinbaum on Friday afternoon and was talking about how irresponsible it is that they would even consider playing football this year, et cetera, et cetera. These kids are unpaid labor. It's ridiculous. Da, 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 da. So the question turned from can they play into should they play? And my answer on this is 100% absolutely, I think the kids are safer to be playing college football as opposed to not being on campus and not being there. One, if you have nothing to look forward to, nothing to play for, nothing to to get ready for, you are less likely to go out and wear your mask and go out and et cetera, et cetera, right? So you're not going to be trying to stay as healthy as possible so that you can actually play. On top of that, these kids are getting tested multiple times a week. The majority of them, 90-plus percent of them, are asymptomatic. They have no symptoms whatsoever. All of them. Oh, yeah. We haven't had a single college football. That's hundred percent. We haven't yeah. had a single person tested by the NCAA by college football. Okay, that have had any symptoms or any sickness whatsoever. A lot of them have tested positive. Yeah, and none of them, none of them have had any symptoms. These are not they not hospitalized. I'm talking not the lack of taste and lack of smell. No symptoms. Yeah, they I mean, nothing. All they just them. nothing at all. I mean, it's insane. So, if you are going to cancel this to where the kids can't come in and they're not going to start playing until January or they're not going to play again until next year, I think it's going to be worse because you're not going to have these schools using the testing and making sure that all of these kids are safe, et cetera. If all of them are at home or if they are just walking around on a college campus without trying to protect themselves and trying to protect other people, it's going to be worse. It's absolutely going to be worse. So these players are in better hands medically by playing the season than they would be if they were not going to play. Like, that's the bottom line. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, it's, it's, this is so common sense to me that we should be playing college football. And yet, and, now, and this is very specific, okay? FCS schools, where it doesn't necessarily matter, where they don't have the ability to test, that's a different story. If you don't have the ability to test, then no, I don't know that you should be playing. However, it's still gone on to show that none of them, like we just said, really have symptoms at all. Like, it's just something else. We More kids die from alcohol consumption in colleges than they do from the flu and whatever else, and kids are more likely to die from the flu than from this. So, 
I know I sound nuts and I, I'm sounding like I'm I'm fired up, and I am. But this is a common sense kind of thing. We have no idea when a vaccine is going to be here's, gonna come here's the deal in. about those FCS schools. At some point in time, those individual schools need to look at their budgets and see is this something they can afford to play or not. And, right. and so, yes, missing out on all the millions of dollars they're going to get from not getting these pay-for-plays from the big schools is going to suck. And if that means they all have to shut down – and maybe not all of them, but some of those schools that don't have the money need to shut down their football team for a year, it's not a health and safety reason they're shutting it down. It's a financial reason they're shutting it down. Well, and, it, okay? and it's a common sense reason. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. like if we can't afford to play this year, but next year everything is fine and those pay-for-plays – come back in and we can all, you know, get big fat juicy budgets again. Then, then we start back up and we play. Everybody gets another year of eligibility. Everybody gets to stay on. And, and, you know, we, we figure this thing out and yeah, we're going to be bringing in incoming freshmen. Most of those incoming freshmen aren't going to have a football season because I don't know that high school football is going to be doing anything. I don't know yeah. what next year's incoming freshman class is going to look like. See, and that's another thing. I think high school football should be happening. Now here, here's the other question. Ben said over under, one half of college coaches of any kind dies of COVID. Now, there are certain protocols that you will have to go through with these coaches, right? These Zoom meetings and whatnot that everybody's doing right now, that will still be implemented as we go along. Now, if you're on the practice field and whatnot, you got to be able to protect yourself. That's where face shields and everything else comes into play, right? That's and, all and some of these coaches are more at risk than others. Okay? Yes, some are. Nick, for sure. Nick Saban is far more at risk than 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 Lane Kiffin. A hundred percent. It's just that's just. It's just how this thing works, and I, you know, is that un is that unfair? Oh, I don't I don't know how to make it fair. It's just it is what it is. But you know, we you know, Mac Brown might have to coach from a booth. That's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of people he, that have coaches, done it. Coaches have done that in the past. It it won't be the last time. Hugh Freeze coached from a dentist chair in the booth for half the season last year. It happens. Yeah, and and they actually won games where he was coaching from up there. Yeah, so. like you can still coach without being on the sidelines. That's okay. Yeah, Joseph that's, Gomez. That's perfectly fine. Those coaches, listen, the these programs, coaches, trainers, whatever, have access to the best medical care we have to offer. Yes. Okay, because football, college football makes so much money and none of it goes to labor. So when none of it goes to labor – Everything around the labor is unbelievable. Yes. Yes. Uh, Joseph Gomez on YouTube. As many buildings as these big schools have, you can't make one or two into a bubble-like environment if you really want to push safety. No, they can. They they, they can. Um, I don't know how a school gets away with doing that. I would. I, I know I know you would. And they, I, would. I mean, they do have athletic dorms and whatnot, but they're not allowed to have. No, I'm not talking about athletic dorms. He's, he's talking about a building. I'm talking about an academic building, a wing. I'm going to take one of these buildings that's going to be all online learning, okay? okay? English lit is going to be all online learning. There's no class discussion that we have to have or we're in person, okay? So, so that means we're going to take that whole wing, and it's now just the football wing. And people, coaches can live there. We'll, we'll build you a, yeah. a, an apartment. We'll be, you know, we, we're just going to take this over, this area in this building. We'll golf cart you back and forth from everything. And, and there's a way to make them a bubble while other kids are coming on campus. But no kids are walking in and out of that building. No kids are walking in and out of the athletic building. Yeah, there's there are ways to protect these coaches. The, 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 the problem that we're going to run into on all these college campuses if you're trying to create a bubble, is the co-eds. Yeah, yeah, that's likely uh, that's likely going to be an issue. That's, that's gonna, gonna the be reason the college campuses can't create the bubble is because there is no amount of security that you are going to put on these young men that are going to keep the ladies away. It's just not it happening. It is true. It is true. They, go, they are going to find a way to get in. But that's why they're doing all the testing. Or right. those guys are gonna find a way to get out, but some, some, somebody, some way it's going. Somebody's gonna find some ladies. Yeah, something's gonna happen there. So, with that said, should they play? A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, we think so. Yeah, I, and I believe this, that. My opinion has changed on this since it started, and I have evolved as I've gotten new information. If kids start getting hospitalized, 
then then we will have a different opinion because yeah. right now the the numbers just say that's just not going to happen. Yeah, the data. If it, it like, starts happening, then yeah. I have to reevaluate myself. And everyone who says, "Oh, why well, I told you so," you shouldn't have done it. Doesn't necessarily make you right because if no one ever gets hospitalized from this, and you were saying we shouldn't have played at all, then they, then you were proven to be completely dead wrong. Yeah. So we just we just gotta kind of play with parameters, and then you know hope for the best. Uh, Joseph Gomez said, "Even the nerds in Revenge of the Nerds lived in the gym for a minute." Yeah, <laughs> you got that right. You got that right. All right, let's move off of this one. We spent.